Today I'm going to look uh, at the tactics by Alexander Morozovich uh, from one of the ebooks that I recently published on Amazon. Uh, so the book contains about uh, several dozen of games with Morozovich where he played a, a, a nice tactical shot in them. Uh, he was playing with the black pieces in all the games, it's just to illustrate his sharp attacking style um, and counter attacking style. Uh, that's why the book is called Counter Attack with Alexander Morozovich. So I'll just pick a few random puzzles. Uh, well, start with one. Um, so this is a game from 2003. He was playing with the black pieces. Um, and uh, if we look at the position carefully, we'll see that there are several features um, in the position. For example, um, well, white's pieces are a little bit loose. Um, you know, the queen is defending the rook, which is being attacked, and they're also defending the um, the bishop. Nobody's really defending the king, even though the black queen is pretty close to the to that queen. Um, let's see what else is going on. Well, black's pieces are quite active. The rook is on the second rank here. Um, it's attacking both the bishop and the rook. The knight on c5 could jump to some aggressive squares like d3 on e4, uh, and the queen is, is here on e1, attacking f2. That's also pretty aggressive. Um, so how can we crown these kind of positional achievements with a tactical shot? Well, um, there's a famous saying that loose pieces drop off. So let's see if we can do anything to, to make the, the, the rook drop off. Um, so exchanges like say on a2 or c2 don't seem to do much. Uh, sacrificing the queen here doesn't really do much either. There's no other useful check. So we should look into the knight sacrifices. Knight to b3 doesn't do anything. Well, it doesn't attack anything, so white could then just take the rook. We should always remember that our, our own rook is under attack. Um, so what's left is the jumps with the knight. So we could go to d3 or e4. So let's look at knight to d3. Um, well, if he takes with the bishop, uh, well, then we just attack, uh, we take on f2 and the rook and the queen. We'll probably checkmate that lone king here. If he takes with the queen, we can pick up the rook on a2, so that seems pretty okay for us. We're going to win with extra exchange. So let's see what Morozovich actually played here. So, okay, it turns out, uh, back in the position, he played knight to d3, uh, a nice shot. Now, if queen d3, then rook takes, as this line shows. We have to visualize here a little bit. If bishop takes, um, well, then queen takes with check, king h3, queen f2, and with mate. So in the game, he took on um, he took on b2. And, and now black could recapture back, but that would just leave our knight stranded and not leave us with anything. That's not why Morozovich went for all this. If he wants to, he can always pick up the rook back. That's the advantage of this this move, knight to d3 over knight to e4. Say, instead he took one f he took one f2, and then the king has to go to h3. If it goes to here, it's mate. So the king has to go to h3. He gives another check, then the king. Well, if the king goes to g4, then we have to visualize that this knight would jump here from d3 and win the queen. So he has to go to h4, and then Morozovich played this this nice move pawn to g5 and now he took and uh, then came queen to f6 and I think the black king either gets mated or he has to go to square like g4 in which case knight e5 wins the queen so black's gonna win the queen here no matter what so it's a nice attacking game by Morozovic and I think typical for his games he exploits the position of opponents lose pieces all right thanks for watching